Clip Studio has added some Webtoon features that could be game changers for Webtoon workflows. Let's take them for a test drive and see if they live up to the hype. Hey, Walter here doing what I can to make comics and webtoons easier because it shouldn't be overwhelming or daunting to tell your story. And apparently Clip Studio feels the same way because in a recent update, they've added some very exciting features specifically for webtoon. Now the best way to test them is going to be creating a webtoon episode. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing, let's create a new webtoon episode. Go to file and new. In the use of work area, choose webtoon. That's gonna be the scroll looking icon. Now name your file. I would suggest picking something useful like comic name underscore episode underscore 001. Choose your save location. I would also pick something useful here like documents, comics, comic name, season 01. Now Clip has some presets in here. Whatever you do, don't select the 690 pixel wide template. It's too small, it's going to look like poop when you upload it, but any of these other ones will be fine. However, I'm going to enter my own size. If you're familiar with my other process videos and the templates I've created, this is the size that I use in those templates. 1900 pixels wide by 16,000 pixels tall. I feel like this gives enough length to fit in a good amount of panels, so we don't have to keep switching pages all the time. And that's gonna make a little bit more sense soon. DPI resolution doesn't really matter when we're talking in pixels, but just enter 300 pixels DPI just to avoid any uproar. Now for the number of pages is gonna depend on how many pages at 16,000 pixels tall you need to make your comic. For me, I'd use probably five pages as a starting point. However, for this demo, we're going to use two pages. Now don't stress this step because you can add and re remove pages at any time during the process. Even better, you can resize them on the fly, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, so the comic is created and we get this full episode view and we can see that we have the two pages that we created. This is what it looks like on the hard drive. All right, so at this point we can add, delete, move, import pages just by right clicking and getting the pull up menu. There's a lot of options, but we can't draw in this view. Side note, if you start adding, deleting, moving, the file names on your hard drive are gonna get mixed up and not make any sense. So you may have page one, two, and three in your clip program, but if you look at it on your hard drive, it could be page one, page seven, page four, page 20. To fix this, go to the menu, click on story, click on sort page file name. If you ever have to work with these files outside of Clip, this is going to be a lifesaver. So here's a before and after doing that. Okay, so we're ready to draw now. Double click on page one to open the page up in a new tab. This is now a normal file that we can draw on like we usually do. We can click back to the episode tab and zoom in and out and resize the tab, whatever. Uh, just choose the view that works best for you. Then we go back to the page tab that we just opened. Notice that when I draw, the episode tab updates instantly. Now I've reached the bottom of page one and there's not enough room for another panel, but too much empty space just to leave there. No problem. Just use your rectangle select tool and select the area you wanna keep in the page file. Now go to the top menu, select edit and crop, or you can do alt EZ. All right, so since page one is done, let's move on to page two and I'll show you another cool feature. Double click on page two to open it up in the page view. So we could just draw like we did in the first page, but let's test out clips on screen feature. Go to the menu, go to view, and then select on screen area. This shows us the area that would show up on someone's phone. So now we know what it will look like, what will fit on a phone screen, and we can draw accordingly. This is really slick. You can also change the size of the window by going to menu, view, on screen area settings. Webtoon is defaulted to one by two. This is a little long. I'd say one to 1.8 is a little bit more realistic for phones in 2020. If you wanted to mimic a desktop monitor, one to one should be a close enough ratio, but we're gonna do one to 1.8. So as we move down the canvas with our panels, the on-screen view area moves with us, regardless of our zoom level. Like I really love this feature, though I wish it had a secondary shade to be able to see phone and monitor sizes simultaneously. Now that we've reached the bottom with an awkward amount of space left over, we could crop it like we did last time, but we could also do the opposite if we want. 
Go to menu, edit, select change canvas size and click on the top middle square and then add another 2000 pixels to the height. Now we can draw a nice tall panel. At this point, we could right click on the episode tab and click add page, uh, but let's go ahead and say the comic is completed. The next step then is going to prep the file for upload to Webtoon. Super easy with these new features they've added. Just go to file and export Webtoon. Choose your directory. I create a slice folder under the main episode folder that I created earlier. I'm gonna pick PNG. Webtoon allows PNG now, and most of the times they are gonna be smaller than a JPEG, but try exporting both versions and see which one is smaller for your art style. Colors, gradients, tones tend to wreak havoc on file size compression algorithms, so JPEG might be better than PNG for you. We'll keep the episode name the same, but you could change it if you wanted to. Now for the output size, we're gonna select specify width and enter 800 pixels. And you're also going to want to select all pages unless you know something I don't. And select divide vertically and enter 1280 pixels. 800 by 1280 are the current Webtoon requirements as of December 2020. Now hit OK. If we look at the hard drive, we can see that it split our comic up for us. Now the final test, of course, is going to be uploading it to Webtoon. I've shown uploading before in another video, so watch that if you want more detail. The quick version is open up your Webtoon dashboard, click on add episode, add a thumbnail, add a title, let's use likes and subscribes, melt my heart. Oops, uh, I spelled that wrong. Likes and subscribes, melt my heart. All right, so upload the files we just sliced and click on preview PC. Looks good to me. Go back, click on preview mobile, looks good. No white lines where the files were spliced. Now let's go ahead and compare that on-screen area feature. Looking back in clip, this area should be showing on Webtoon Mobile. And it's, it's pretty close, but we're seeing less on Webtoon's preview via the web. Let's actually go ahead and publish the episode and see what it looks like on a real phone. All right, so this is pretty spot on for my specific cell phone anyways, using that one to 1.8 ratio. One last cool thing before we go is a neat text trick that you can do, and I love this because you know I love lettering. Let's go ahead and add some lettering across both of our pages. Now that we've done all of this work, but let's say we want to change the font. It's like, oh crap, do I have to retype all of this stuff? No, you don't. It's pretty simple to change all of it at once. Go to Menu, Story, Edit Text, select Story Editor, and the window is going to pop up. Now hold down control and you can select all of these individual texts or you can select entire pages. Let's go ahead and select both pages. Now change our text settings with the text tool selected. You can change color, font, size, etc. Now go to the menu, story, edit, text, and apply tool property to text. Boom! All the text across both pages has changed. Okay, that should get you started with the new Webtoon features that they've added. I think these are pretty awesome additions. Will I switch to this method? I don't know yet. Uh, a positive is that it's gonna keep my files smaller and thus it's gonna be easier on my poor little computer. It would also allow me to more easily add panels in the middle of an episode with a lot more ease than I had before. The last amazing thing is that it would allow me to completely remove Photoshop from my process, which I think is pretty cool. A negative is that even though they have it contained to this episode file, there is still some back and forth opening and closing files. Having to deal with more than one file is what I was trying to avoid with the method I created. The other potential negative is that you need the more expensive version of Clip Studio, Clip EX, to access these features. But good news, they have sales often, so wait for that sale and get yourself a copy. Also, if you bought Pro, the cheaper version, you can also get an upgrade key on sale that's gonna end up being the same price as if you had bought EX to begin with. But I think the pros may outweigh the cons. I'm gonna give it a try on an upcoming episode to see what I think. Speaking of, check out my new Webtoon comic, Ghost Bats on Webtoon. Like it, subscribe, rate it 10 stars, and share it with your friends. So what do you think of these new features? Have you tried it? Do you love it? Have you run into any bugs? Let us know in the comments and if you want to keep making comics easier, be sure to like, link, love, hug, and hit 
that sub button for more sweet, sweet goodness. Peace.